Okay, welcome to the 100th video of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. Uh, like myself, you are also told that uh, like poles repel each other and unlike poles attract each other. But I'm pretty sure that's a description and not an explanation. So what exactly happens when two like poles repel each other? And what does the word repel mean? Would that be force in motion? And what exactly would be unlike poles attracting each other? Would that be inertia and acceleration? Since magnetism is definitionally radiation, and radiation has never attracted anything, then obviously the notion of magnetic attraction both is absurd and cannot exist definitionally. So, what exactly are we talking about when we speak of magnetic attraction? So, that's the question I'm trying to ask you that will be solved in the uh, fifth edition of uh, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. We have to think about simple things. We've been uh, given a lot of uh, descriptions in our lives, but no explanations. So, here we have quote-unquote magnetic attraction. But that's not attraction. There is no such thing as magnetic attraction. You have to use your brain a little bit and think about something that uh, isn't going to get you laid or isn't going to get you rich. There used to be a day many thousands of years ago when people actually sat around and thought about the important things in life and not just the stuff that would get them rich or laid. There's a greater bliss had from genuine understanding of things never before understood than there is from making a lot of money. You're not going to take it with you when you die. So, what is magnetic attraction and what is Magnetic repulsion. Well, we know that magnetic attraction cannot exist. Well, I see them attracting each other. It's an ancient concept that's existed since the beginning of time, uh, from the premise of the lodestone. So, what happens if I take two light poles and try to bring them together like I have right now? I, right now I have a north pole and a south, north pole and a north pole together. If I release the one, It goes shooting all the way across the room like a rocket. So how is that any different than taking this magnet, this Teflon coated magnet, and bringing it together? What's the difference between that and two like poles? Of course on these two magnets it's extremely hard. It'll just flip in that case. What's the difference? What is going on? There's only one field. Magnetism is not a field. It's an ether divergence. Magnetism is a force, not a field. All spatially divergent ether modalities are the loss of counterspatial inertia, as is necessitated. It's what props up the entire visible universe, the cosmos estitos, the empirical universe. Like on like poles, all which necessitate counterspatial acceleration can indeed be cancelled by omnidirectional additive wave generation. This is like wave cancellation. What's the difference between this and this? I hit the tripod. Excuse me. What's the difference between this and this? What's the difference? There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. It is force cancellation. What is force cancellation? Well, gravity also is not a field. All you'll find in physics books that gravity is an acceleration. One acceleration of what by of what by what? That's just another description. It's not an explanation. All force has a frequency which can be camped, canceled or amplified. Counter space only has one cancellation, that being space, generation itself, by changing the co-gravitational field as explained by Dr. Olaf Defimchenko, although he doesn't explain it, and he gives the premise for the co-gravitational field, but my earlier video where I talked about a, uh, a quote-unquote anti-gravity device, which I did not make a claim that it was anti-gravity, I worked off the premise of changing the co-gravitational field of a coil and one or more magnets and changing the co-gravitational field, and by God, that device works. It has extremely little power, I won't make a claim that it is an anti-gravity device, but I'll assure you it does work. If you actually have it in your hands, you would feel it. Canceling magnetic forces easily. Canceling a counter-spatial inertia requires generation of space. 
Well, what do you mean generation of space? Well, you saw a second ago where I had like on like poles. I had them together. I squeezed them. I let one. It went shooting across the room. What do you think that is? What do you think that is? We know all about sound cancellation headphones. What is the cancellation of force? The cancellation of force is a counterspatial sink where force is canceled. Very simply, force cancellation. And this? What is this? What's the opposite of force cancellation? You have to think. So, why do two unlike poles accelerate towards one each other? towards a return to counter space, the elimination of space. There are no fields in space. There's only space as a posterior attribute to the creation of fields. And space is given a second attributional relationship, that being time. Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot for a reason, because neither space nor time are a force or a field. They cannot act on anything. There's no such thing as space and time acting on anything. There are no straight lines in the universe. Magnetic acceleration is force acceleration, just like canceling sound waves. Additive waves compounded force, just like on like on light poles. All of which necessitates counterspatial acceleration, which can indeed be canceled by omnidirectional additive wave generation. Magnetic force has a spatial vector with likewise clockwise and counterclockwise frequency. Everything in the universe is either charge and discharge. Centrifugal and centripetal, but all of that is ultimately reducible to two co-principles, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. What do you think you saw when you saw two light poles being let loose and you saw one magnet shoot across the floor of this kitchen? Would that be force and motion, or would that be inertia and acceleration? What's this? Is this force and motion, or is this inertia and acceleration? You tell me. What do you think it is? Solve it. Give me the answer. This is not magnetic attraction. We know that magnetism, of course, is shooting centrifugally out from either side, either pole of this magnet, returning centripetally. It is perpetual reciprocation, in the middle of which, incorrectly called the block wall, is a dielectric inertial plane. So. Since there's no such thing as magnetic attraction, since radiation does not attract anything, what is happening? Could it possibly be force cancellation? What would be the what would be the premise of force cancellation? Would that be a counterspatial sink of inertia and acceleration, the cancellation of magnetic divergent force? So the now instead of being here, the dielectric inertial plane. If I actually were to stick this underneath the ferrofilm or the uh, ferro cell, you'll see that in st now that these two magnets are together, you'll actually see the dielectric inertial plane is shifted from here to here. If I were to actually have six of these magnets, it would be shifted from here to here, if the magnet total was right about there. So, inertia and acceleration versus force and motion. So this is a question, I'll leave the hundredth video for you, this being the hundredth video from the ongoing book, of which I've got like 300 more pages to add, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. The question to you is, what is magnetic acceleration? Incorrectly called magnetic attraction, which does not exist. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. And it's kind of hard to do with these two magnets. It'll just flip on me. No, it didn't that time. It went shooting across the room. It's still rolling. So what was that? Did you just witness inertia and acceleration? Or did you just witness force and motion when I had those two light poles together and I let that little Teflon-coated magnet go and it shot across the room? What was that? Why, if you've read every book out there, that's magnetic repulsion. That's a description, not an explanation. What is going on? Now, the answer is rather simple. Two parts. What's the difference between this? And what's the difference between that and this? The second part being, what's the difference between inertia and acceleration and force and motion? Is there a cancellation potential? The third item is, 
since gravity is not a field and magnetism is not a field what is a magnet? there is only one field We're talking about inertia and acceleration versus force and motion either additive or cancelled two more words polarized and coherent you know what a laser is right? so ask yourself the question a 5 watt laser isn't enough to read a book by even if you've got eyesight like a rabbit. So, why will a 5 watt laser, which is coherent light, burn a hole in your ass? It'll blind you permanently. Can't read, can't read a book by a 5 watt light bulb isn't worth shit, but a 5 watt coherent laser will burn your eyeballs right out and burn your ass. You'll jump to the ceiling if I shoot you in the butt with a 5 watt laser. So, what does a magnet mean when we talk about coherency and polarization? What does the word polarized mean and how would that be relational to force and motion and inertia and acceleration? Well, we know that either side can attract a magnet. I can use this side and, and of course we're not talking about genuine attraction here. Flip it over to the other sides, same thing. So, polarized and coherent and now we need to talk about force and motion. Cancellation of force and motion is what, by what, and how. We obviously know now that magnetic attraction is bullshit. We know that magnetic repulsion is bullshit. And not only are they descriptions, they're poor descriptions. Canceling magnetic force is easy. Canceling, in the case of gravity, counterspatial inertia requires generation of space. That's how my little device, which I've actually built a third prototype, which works even better. Cheers, by the way. So very happy. I can't even express it to you. The cancellation of counterspatial inertia, what you call gravity, requires the generation of space. You can actually see this, and you've seen it in one of my earlier videos, underneath the ferro cell. I won't go any more details on that by now. You change the code gravitational field of the falling object. Of course, it's not falling. Well, yeah, it is. It's falling to Earth. No, that's not it. Gravity is not a force, obviously. You don't see gravity pushing stuff away, do you? Gravity is not a field. There's only one field. There's only one ether and it is expressed by four field modalities. Electricity, dielectricity, magnetism, gravity. But gravity itself alone really isn't one. There's really only three. Dielectricity, magnetism, and, uh, and electricity. Dielectricity, electricity, and magnetism. Gravity is just a dielectric condensate with omnidirectional counterspatial vectors which we call gravity. Acceleration towards a large mass. But gravity is not a field, nor are space and time active on anything, as Tesla said. That's why Tesla called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot. Space nor time are neither a force nor a field. So, we know there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. There's no, there's no such thing as magnetic repulsion. So, you have to think in terms of inertia and acceleration, force and motion. Figure it out. Post the answer if you think you figured it out. Why? When two light poles are together, does it go shooting across the room like a rocket? Yet, when two unlike poles are facing each other, why do they come together? It's not attraction, and that shooting across the room is not repulsion. We know that radiation attracts nothing. Figure it out. Use your mind. Everything you've been taught is bullshit. The notion of magnetic attraction has existed for thousands and thousands of years. It is a deeply ingrained in the human consciousness as the fact that the sun rises in the east in the morning. Figure it out. See if you've got the answer, then post the answer below. And welcome to the 100th video with 100 more to make at least and about 400 more pages or so to add to my book. Everything's free, so not selling anything to you, so like it or lump it. I always uh, couldn't stand people that complained about free stuff. Nobody's got a chain to your eyeballs or your internet browser. Do as you please.
you got the answer, post it. Think for yourself. Figure it out. Use logic, rational reasoning. Have a good evening and a happy new year. It's 2015 and it's the 100th video of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. See you later.